Good afternoon. We're back on. Today we're going to talk about tools. And we actually needed this because we had actually not talked about this yet. So we're going to do it today together with Professor Giacomo Goli from the University of Florence. And this is our third appointment of this cycle. Um, this is uh, taken care of by the CSEF group, so the Woodworking Technology Group. And uh, today we're going to have a yet another appointment at 5 p.m. in order to tell you who the five winners are of the five SIA awards are. That is uh, solid woodworking, paneling, digitalization, sustainability. Um, and then at four, quarter to four p.m. Italian time, we'll have a chat with the jurors. Of course, they won't be telling us who the winners are, uh, but we're going to have a chat about how they have read um, the, 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 the shortlisted uh, companies. Uh, as I said, Giacomo Goli is going to talk about tools, especially cutting speed and feed. Um, thank you for being here, Giacomo. We're going to see your slides on the computer screen here. And thank you. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Achima. Uh, thank you to everybody who's here. My name is Giacomo Goli. I'm professor of woodworking technology and forestry technology at the University of Florence. Uh, with colleagues, uh, we have been working for a number of years on this issue, cutting forces. So we thought it would be interesting to give you this presentation about the configuration of cutting and feed speeds in wood material processing. Uh, I thought I would be able to point at uh, items on the presentation, so it's going to be a bit messy uh, for this reason. I apologize for that. And to talk about woodworking, the first thing to do is to know wood. Wood comes from forests, very peculiar material for a number of reasons. Wood is a functional material, and uh, the function of wood is to let the, the, the tree grow and let it grow in height and to sustain leaves that perform photosynthesis. So I have branches, leaves, a number of issues. But this is also gives opportunities because wood is a biogenic material, which means that it does have a special relation with CO2. Uh, so it's very advantageous from an environmental standpoint when you do life cycle assessments of wood-based products or wooden products. It's a hierarchical structure, strongly anisotropic, and this structure characterizes wood uh, uh, considerably, which is very important when working it. Wood species, you saw it below on the right, about 80,000 different wooden species in the world. Uh, and the panorama is, is very varied. Cocobolo, 1260 kilograms of cubic meters density. Barsa is close next to it, 150 kilograms per cu cubic meter. It's like comparing stone to 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 to, to plastron. Uh, so it, all different. Each individual species has got its own anatomical characteristics determining behavior, including density. Uh, wood does have uh, many defects. These uh, images have been made available by Microtech. You see uh, knots, uh, knots, for instance, uh, uh, or cracks, so fissures, worms. Uh, uh, the, the black tunnels there are insects uh, digging tunnels. Uh, so we do find a lot of 
we did a regular things inside wood that we have to consider when we're going to work it, mill it. We also have to consider that a single species can have highly different characteristics. On the left, we have American Douglas fir, 14 rings per centimeter. The European Douglas fir has one ring per centimeter, so that density and growth characteristics are so different that there are the almost different species, but they are same species. So, so this, you have to consider all this when thinking about woodworking and thinking about um, configurations. We can have two approaches. A purely geometric approach based on cinematics of working, woodworking, and a more mechanical approach that, how, that we have been working a lot recently, recent years, and we have developed uh, uh, studies uh, talking about um, cutting speeds and forces. Um, what is important here is wood density, humidity, moisture of wood. We have developed a model based on 11% dense humidity moisture. We're talking about wood, we have to think about the orientation of the grain, the type of tool. A disc will do a lot of road, but will uh, take a lot more time getting cold. Uh, the type of cutting material. The way the cutting tools are clamped, are fastened to the body or clamped to the tool. Uh, let's think about the simplest cutting manner, so free orthogonal cut. You see here we have um, the, the, the cutting speed the chip thickness, the cutting width, and the cutting length. So this is the easiest type of cutting. And in this model, I'm showing you how wood behaves when it is uh, um, recorded by a high-speed camera. You see it's longitudinal, and the, the knife is cutting very well here. And so 15 kilohertz, frames per second, basically, 15,000 frames per second. If I put the grain slightly tilted in the direction of the cross of the grain, of course, in these con working conditions, the cutting edge exercises totally different strengths than that it would, or forces, than it would when uh, working cross grain, uh, which I imagine you all are very well aware of it, but you, you see what really see what happens in these pictures. And when we talk about forces, we see the differences, uh, two extremes, uh, longitudinal cut, uh, the last uh, is cross grain. This, um, here on the left, we have um, shear forces for beach chips. So, 0, 180 are cross grain profiling. The strength needed to, to cut beach, 0 0.091 thickness, the darkest line with the circles, is 5 newtons per square millimeter of section, whereas when we go crosswise, it's double. So if we work crosswise, the strength is about the double than when we work in longitudinally. If you look at the right-hand chart, poplar wood, poplar is less dense, um, so different strengths, lower strengths. So different types of species can produce higher or, slow or lower strengths. Uh, we can calculate the strength of cutting a chip. You see that with beach, the zero degrees 
you need 150 newton force, like 15 kilograms to push the way. Whereas perpendicularly, you need 300 newtons, 30 kilograms. When we talk about poplar, the values are lower, so 100 and 150 newtons. Here too, I would have liked to be able to point, but from here, it's easy to calculate um, powers from strength. Power is strength multiplied by speed. So force by speed gives us the power that we need to do this job. You see that with Poplar work at zero, 25 meters per second speed, 3,750 watts are absorbed. If I'm going faster, 50 meters per second, it's gone. I need more power, 7,500 7, watts. Uh, if I work perpendicular to the head, so 25 meters per second, the power needed is 7,500 7, watts, if I'm, and so on. What, how does the, cutting speed impact. So the more heat, the faster I go, the heat, more heat I create, uh, the, the more the tool is gonna get hotter and hotter and go, get to worn out much faster. That's why speed ranges are advised. For instance, with soft wood, we talk uh, um, HM mills, millers, uh, we have 60 to 90. Whereas with, uh, when we talk about hardwood, uh, we have to go at slower speeds because otherwise wear and tear would be much faster. And so on with, um, all the types of uh, materials, wood and mater wood based. Okay, we did tests in France. We stayed there two months. We also had a bicycle with wooden panels below. And as part of this project, Anisotropy, uh, sponsored by the University of Florence. And um, I would like, also like to thank uh, Gianluca Fantacci, who made the three special millers just for us, or cutters just for us. And how does the model that we developed work? We have four entry variables, so the grain angle, wood density, actual angle of the knife. It can be straight, tilted 15 degrees or whatever and the working mode, up milling or down milling. So up milling or down milling, explained in Italian. Um, here on the, on the chart here, you say 90 is head work, woodworking, on, 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 working on the head of the wood, and the cutting coefficients here are higher. So 90, lambda 3 and lambda 0, the straight blade, produces a coefficient of 55. Lambda is tilted at 15 degrees. The coefficient yielded is about 40. I'm saving 40% of the force. Simply by tilting the edge of the knife, if instead my lambda is 30, so 30 actual angle, 30 degree actual angle, forces are halved. So same cutting speed, half the, the, the power. So we, here I need half the power. Uh, than that I need when using a straight tool. If you, I could spend hours, but the, what, what does the model tell me? Two coefficients, Ks and int, and my formula is F, the thickness of the chip, L, the, 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 length, the width of the chip, and uh, it tells me uh, what, what, what force I need to cut the chip. 
graphically shown here on the top I have grain orientation 90 degrees chip thickness 0 0.1 mm chip width 30 millimeters density 740 kilograms per cubic meter cutting velocity 25 then Depending up milling, down milling, the different lambdas, I have up, peak, up peak peaks and down peaks that change. So, but just by using the formula, just changing the, the lambda of the tool, of the milling tool. In terms of grain orientation, GA0 degrees. You see that uh, powers on the right. So I'm, I'm using much less energy here, power. This an introduction to show you how it works. Let's try to apply it to a rotating tool. This is a simplified version for orthogonal cuts. Let's apply it to a rotating in tool. Um, the chips that are produced here are weird. Uh, there are cycloid arcs with the zero thickness on one hand, at one end and uh, the highest uh, width at the other end. So I'm going to have a number of chips, uh, the thickness of which is not going to be the same. So here we're going to calculate, we're going to need to calculate the average thickness of the chip. Since it's cycloid arcs, I'm going to leave the surface all striped by the, uh, those cycloid arcs. Here we have a number of factors coming into play. I'm not going to list them, but we have time, so... So it's uh, various factors, and we have the, the number of uh, dents or tooths. theoretical rugosity, a number of uh, roughness, uh, and I've created three working conditions. An end mill cutter, a profiling cutter, with the, and then a planer with different speeds. You see that these three different working conditions immediately produce very different uh, uh, cutting speeds. In the first case, it's 16 meters per second, which is very low, and I'm talking about about the end mill cutter. So, and, and here we, we're talking about 15,000 reeds per meter. Second case two, larger diameter, creates uh, higher velocities or speeds, but they can still increase them. Uh, the planing shaft instead, uh, we're already talking about 141 meters per second, so it's quite a lot already. So looking at uh, cutting speed here, I can decide whether I can uh, work at, at higher reefs per minute or not. Another problem is um, feed speed, which is the purpose of this presentation. It's all so I set for all three working conditions or methods 10 minutes per minute as the feed speed. And feed speed, of course, wood moves, and my tool rotates and cuts chips. In this case, we're going to calculate feed per reeve, F, which is quite an important parameter telling us how far, so how, what, what's the feed uh, for each reeve? 
feed of the tool. Why this is important? Because the more the tool cuts chips, the more the feed, the longer the stripes, the higher the crests, and the more it will be visible geometrically uh, by the end user that will see it as a bad, ugly surface. F, that we've just seen, is a parameter, but what matters the most is FZ, that is, uh, in the time of one breathe, uh, wood is move, moving on, but more cu cutters, uh, more knives, I uh, can cut more chips. FZ is the feed per dent or per notch. So if we, if you look at the end mill cutter, with two Z, uh, uh, the cutter two, uh, the, the planing shaft Z4. So the FZ is the same for, for, for the cutters, but now it's, it's different for the planing shaft, the 0 0.21. Uh, this is helpful to see. Um, these are Lades or Vivaldi tools uh, uh, data, but they define the quality. As you can see, AIDS. If I have fine quality to them, it, it goes from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 millimeters. So if my FZ is between this range, I will have good fine quality. If I increase FZ, I will see those uh, waves, and so quality decreases. So setting uh, the, 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 the feed speed can be done geometrically using the FZ formula to obtain the FZ I need. If I need to, to make a beam that is going to place uh, 20 meters high, I can, I mean, I can use, um, I can have less fine quality. But if I want to have a, a manufact like this, and it's going to be an object, an item to, to, to be held in a hand, then I need very fine quality. One. Another key factor is uh, how tall the crests are compared to the plane, to the lower plane. In my uh, drawing is RW, so the waves, uh, how, how much is the height between the bottom part and the upper part, RW. This is another easy to calculate parameter. If this parameter is below one micron, as in the case of the cutter and the uh, blade, uh, you can barely see it. Whereas if you have the uh, end mill cutter and uh, um, RV is higher than one micron, then you can start appreciating and seeing these crests. I've tried to develop a, a graph, and this is a simulation of a surface obtained with uh, um, processing uh, um, um, with uh, um, 5,000 revolutions per minute and six, 6 meters per minute. So what happens if I double the uh, feed uh, speed and uh, the uh, cutting speed? Nothing really happens, because if the uh, R PM and the uh, uh, feed speed is the same, and my final surface will be identical. If I work with six meters per minute and 5,000 revolutions per minute, when I double uh, these uh, um, two parameters, I will obtain the very same uh, result. So if I have a surface that I'm satisfied with, but I want to increase my productivity, I may as well increase the revolutions per minute together with the feed speed and still have the same result. Uh, what happens instead if I increase the VF uh, parameter, speed uh, um, feed speed, FZ also increases, and this happens. The surface becomes more irregular, and so there will be all these waves uh, that are visible, more visible. Uh, what happens if I double Z as a parameter? So instead of using one cutting edge, you, I use two cutting edges. Well, the result uh, in graphical representations will be this one, so with a more regular uh, surface. 
What happens if I increase the diameter of my tool and all the other parameters uh, remain the same? Well, in this case, this is what I will obtain, a better surface, a better quality surface. With small tools, I may have unsatisfactory uh, uh, surfaces, and so I can improve its quality simply by uh, increasing the um, tool um, uh, plane uh, parameter. Another aspect that I can calculate, and I can do this with these formulas, is the uh, chip thickness, uh, H max. Uh, um, as you can read, in the case of uh, the end mill cutter, it will be 3 tenths. Uh, in, uh, in the case of the uh, plate, it will be uh, 6 tenths, so much, much smaller. However, when you calculate uh, the cutting forces, we need the average chip thickness, which is very easy to calculate. You take the HM and divide it by 2. And this is what you obtain, the average uh, um, uh, chip thickness values. Um, an important point I'd like to make uh, are the fastening system. If I have a mechanical fastening system, in order to uh, insert a shaft inside another shaft, uh, I need to have some to room to play with, uh, at least five uh, one hundredth. Uh, so I will have a run out uh, at least equal to 0 0.05. Uh, um, so the average uh, uh, chip uh, thickness uh, in my blade uh, is a three uh, one hundredth. Uh, so it's much smaller than the run out of the uh, shaft. So if I have two cutting edges, two tools, in these conditions, only one cutting edge will, will be able to uh, work. If I have an hydraulic fastening, which is much more accurate and produces much smaller runout, uh, two microns, five microns, I will work much better. So a conventional shaft, or spindle, sorry, will have only one tool, one cutting edge to work, and so my FZ will be very high with a, a, an ugly looking surface. With an hydraulic fastening system, I will use more cutting edges, not all of them though, but still FZ will have, uh, will be better, a better looking surface. Whereas if I use all the cutting edges uh, on my machine, after inserting the shaft, uh, well, all the cutting edges will be uh, uh, aligned and uh, um, the mm, quality of my surface uh, will be very, very good. Uh, so by using uh, the model I showed yesterday, we can calculate the force that it's required to uh, cut these chips for uh, and uh, a mill cutter. It's uh, 385 newtons. If I use a beach uh, with uh, a 45 degree um, um, grain angle and uh, a width of 40 millimeters. Similar conditions for beech wood, straight cutting edge, I would use 412 newton. Whereas in the third case, uh, with uh, the uh, blade, um, um, if I cut along the grain with uh, a 15 degree axial angle, I would obtain a 15 newton in terms of uh, required uh, cutting force. So this allows us to uh, calculate ultimately the cutting power. In the um, end mill cutter, I will use 6 kilowatts to perform this job. For a normal uh, mill cutter, I would need 14 uh, because I have a straight um, cutting edge tool, whereas uh, in the third case with the blades, I have a number of factors that allow me to uh, just use and consume 2 kilowatts only. So as I... Uh, get to the conclusion of my presentation, I'd like to uh, underline that I've, sh I've tried to select the most important aspects in determining cutting speed and feed speed. There are geometrical criteria or formulations that I can insert in an Excel spreadsheet and then can provide me good guidelines and input for uh, setting up this type of woodworking processes. I can also adopt mechanical uh, models that can allow me to calculate the uh, um, cutting force and power and this gives me input whether I need to improve, increase or decrease the speed feed 
the feed speed, whether I am working with stronger, sorry, thick, higher or uh, a smaller uh, chip thickness. So whoever works wo with wood needs to be proud to be able to work and interpret a material that gets extremely complex and heterogeneous. Metals are much simpler to be worked with. And, uh, um, and it's, it, um, wood uh, is also a material that has a unique environmental uh, uh, um, characterization or profile. And from a, the point of view of uh, environmental friendliness, uh, it has nothing to learn from any other materials. If I just may add, this, I, may, I, 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 as I was very quick. Uh, we still have time. I was afraid I would bore my... Um, uh, I would tire up my audience, so I um, tried not to be too long. I'd just like to point that out that uh, at the University of Florence uh, there is a, a graduation program uh, in technology and advanced transformations for uh, woodworking, uh, wood furniture suppliers and uh, um, building wood. This is a graduation program that uh, provides uh, many, uh, a lot of knowledge about uh, wood and its use, uh, microscopic uh, identification, uh, scientific uh, methodologies, wood and wood derivatives, characteristics uh, of the wood species, technical standards, uh, solid uh, mo modeling. Um, there is a training uh, course on uh, building structures in order to uh, be able to have a conversation with uh, um, uh, project planners. Um, we also offer design um, training programs so that our graduates can also have a conversation with the designers. And uh, you can check all these options on uh, our website uh, under the chapter didattica, teaching offer or educational offer. You can certainly find all the details of what we offer. Thank you so much uh, for the attention. I uh, finished a little bit earlier than expected. Um, and of course, this is uh, useful because we have a time available for um, uh, questions and answers. I am extremely curious because something that it really looks uh, very banal, like uh, getting a piece of wood um, run over a piece of metal can actually trigger this um, multitude of data. I know that uh, the most careful and experienced manufacturers uh, are very much in line uh, or oriented to your um, uh, thinking. How did you come about it? Well, I am a wood technologist, so I'm very well familiar with um, uh, material anisotropy. And uh, I was in a company, and one guy once told me I was working uh, uh, wood um, in a longitudinal way, and then I um, I tried uh, uh, the um, cross grain type of working, and I realized that it is much better. And these are people that work on a machining center uh, on an everyday basis but they sometimes lack this knowledge. And also engineers sometimes don't have the ability to understand the, uh, the heterogeneous characteristics of wood and its anisotropy. So velocity uh, forces are more related to uh, panels rather than uh, solid wood, possibly. Well, working a wood panel is much simpler. Uh, this material is much more isotropic, and that's fine, uh, easy. We ran uh, tests, uh, we ran a lot of tests uh, to calculate all these parameters, also for uh, uh, panels, uh, specifically plywood, uh, chip uh, um, boards, uh, and uh, uh, MDF panels. Uh, yeah, my question is, are there manufacturers that are still lagging behind and still need to fill the gap of knowledge and pushes this type of research? I think that data um, that has been shown today are fundamental to uh, have a conversation with whoever manufactures uh, cutting tools. Otherwise, it's just a style exercise. Well, these type of uh, um, exercises have been conducted uh, for a thousand years on metals. Uh, 
uh, all the calculations for uh, shear uh, forces in metals is there, whereas uh, it was lacking in the field of wood. We did something very innovative here. We have already established contacts uh, with uh, um, cutting tool manufacturers uh, or, um, and we have connections with them. We would like to start a conversation with the uh, tool manufacturers that are associated to Asimal to deep dive into this uh, topic. I think we have a group of uh, um, a, a, a high number of um, cutting edge tool manufacturers that are members of uh, Asimal, uh, both for solid wood and for uh, wood panels. Uh, so I believe that if we can intensify this conversation, uh, both sides will benefit. So the association behind the uh, Xil Expo exhibition and uh, all the communication platforms uh, will really uh, try to put all these uh, stakeholders together and really ultimately get to work together and we have the possibility to really rely on uh, on you and your knowledge so I think I can say we maybe can organize a webinar to present uh, your data your method calculation methods and maybe we can uh, maybe you can convey the benefits and the advantages um, of, of, of this theory I think the end users will highly treasure uh, the pieces of knowledge, otherwise they will put pieces of wood uh, in the wrong way, in the, in the wrong direction or orientation. Yeah, they can set up their process uh, um, uh, in a more uh, optimal way, and sometimes with manual uh, uh, machine it's easy to learn, but with uh, CNC machines, if you, have, uh, if you can rely on a tool that helps you in um, uh, setting up uh, the machine in the most optimized way, I think it's important. So going back to tool manufacturers, I can mention Gianluca Fantacci, who is the president of the um, tool makers um, group at Asimal, and he, is, he, he drives, he, he pushes us to work a lot. Many customers call him and they ask me, how am I supposed to set up the uh, feed speed or the cutting speed? So developing an application, developing a tool that uh, helps me uh, select the type of material, poplar, um, uh, available speed from the machine, how do you work it, uh, what settings uh, do you have available, or what is the power of your engine, and uh, what is your um, targeted quality and an app can um, give the, um, the, the, the right guidance. If the, uh, revolu if the rotation speed is maximum 12,000, uh, well, and you can adjust the other parameters. I think with this system, it's also easy to calculate the power. As far as I know, there is nothing similar in uh, um, the uh, wood working industry, and I believe it, be, it would be greatly helpful to the end users. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree with you. I have to be honest, I didn't follow you uh, through uh, completely. Um, it was uh, kind of hard to get to grasp all your um, input. However, it would be, uh, it is highly appreciated. I think the message we have here is very nice. All in all, access to knowledge can be made simple, can be simplified. Through a simple app, many problems can be overcome. I think I like this idea very much. So I think that this cycle of lectures sponsored by and organized by CISEF are really highly, highly valuable. I think we will have additional occasions in the future to meet again. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Ashma, for inviting me here today. Thank you for your attention.